I'm Dr Norman McLean. Uh, I qualified in medicine at the Otago Medical School 50 years ago. I did uh, practice within obstetrics and gynaecology for nearly 40 years. I worked for a number of years at the Southland Hospital as a junior doctor. I then went to National Women's Hospital in Auckland, then Hamilton Hospital, and then travelled overseas and worked in the National Health Service in Dundee in Scotland for uh, more than two years where I worked as a junior specialist or registrar in obstetrics and gynaecology. Then following my time in Dundee I returned to Southland and have practiced for 38 years or so as a specialist gynaecologist uh, obstetrician in Southland. During that time I've done uh, in the area of maybe 8,000 births that would include maybe 2,000 caesarean sections. I have performed abortions uh, early in my career. I uh, had not given it a great deal of thought, the issue of termination of pregnancy, uh, but uh, when I began work in Dundee, uh, Dundee was a very liberal centre for termination of pregnancy. Uh, but at that time in New Zealand, uh, very few terminations were carried out, so that I had never been involved in New Zealand before travelling to Scotland. And on my very first day in Dundee, uh, I'm in the operating theatre, I do a hysterectomy with a senior a consultant. He then says to me, can you do DNCs, dilatations and curatages? I said, yes, no problem, I've done many of those uh, for incomplete miscarriages, common procedure for young uh, specialists in training. He said, well, you can do the rest of the list. I said, no problem. So I'm scrubbing up, the nurse comes in and I say to her, please tell me what's the indication for the first uh, operation needing the DNC? She says, it's just the usual. I say, well, this is my first day on the job What's the usual in Dundee? She says, a termination of pregnancy. I was somewhat uneasy because I hadn't actually done a termination of pregnancy previously. I knew there were ethical issues around it, but I hadn't given it any serious thought. And then I think to myself, well, if I say no, I'm not comfortable about this, someone else is gonna to have to come and do it. The patient was already on the operating table. I could see them, they were already anaesthetized, their legs were in position and uh, you know there was going to be a problem so I gritted my teeth and said oh well that's no problem and I did it and it went straight forwardly and I did the next five that were on the list for that morning and then next week for the operating list I did the uh, the simple cases the so-called terminations of pregnancy and that continued for about a year so over that time I would have certainly done between one and two hundred terminations of pregnancy. So I know about the technique. I stopped doing abortions as a result of a what I would call a revelation or an understanding that came to me quite suddenly. Uh, and th this relates to a teenage experience of having read about the German uh, destruction of the Jewish people, the six million innocent Jewish people during the war. And when I read about that as a teenager, it greatly troubled me. And I struggled to cope with it uh, and couldn't understand how a democratic Christian society could do that. It, it, it was incomprehensible to me how such a thing could happen on such a scale. I knew Mr. Hitler was a bad man maybe, but how could all the people who were involved in turning the gas taps on do it? Well, after a year of performing the abortions and being somewhat uneasy but cooperating with the system, it came to me that I was doing the same thing. I was doing exactly the same thing. I was removing, destroying innocent, defenseless, unborn children. But in my mind, they were equal to Jews or equal to disabled children that the, Jew, that the German folk had killed 270,000 of them before they moved on to the Jews. And 
dramatically, really, I, I realised this is not right. right. This is not what I should be doing. Uh, this is not the medicine, the uh, life-giving, healing medicine that I wanted to practise. And from that day, I stopped. There are a small group of doctors who are approving and doing abortions. The, the vast majority of doctors, because of the Hippocratic Oath principle which prohibits uh, abortion, it still lingers on. Uh, but yes, there are a small group and some will be committed to the pro-choice position. That is, women should be the deciders and they should have the full authority to have this procedure. But another group will not have any uh, sense of the moral or ethical complexities of the issue and the competing rights of the mother and the unborn child. There are a number of different types of abortion procedure, methods by which the unborn child is removed from the mother's womb. In early pregnancy, up to around 10 weeks, it is possible that pills can be taken which will cause the death of the baby and cause the womb to contract and expel the baby, somewhat similar to a spontaneous miscarriage. During those first 10 weeks, however, a surgical procedure can be carried out, dilatation and curatage. Dilatation meaning opening of the neck of the womb and curatage using a metal instrument to physically, manually scrape the baby and the placenta out of the womb. The womb then contracts down and the bleeding reduces. Then there are a second trimester abortions. These are from 12 to 14 weeks up to maybe 24 weeks called dilatation and evacuation. So there's a surgical component to that. The second trimester abortions can be either done using hormone tablets or strong chemicals which the mother takes by mouth or intravaginally or they, it can be done surgically. The tablets uh, are powerful tablets which cause contractions of the womb. The womb contracts like a normal labour unpleasant pain can go on for some hours, if not sometimes some days. Then there's the last group of 24 to 25 weeks on to full term, 40 weeks, a late term abortion. It's very gruesome. It's very gruesome. The reality of abortion, particularly second trimester, is very gruesome. One of the difficulties with late term abortions if they are carried out using uh, hormone tablets to induce labour, is that the baby may be born alive. That is what would normally happen uh, in the la uh, last trimester of pregnancy. If you induce labour, contractions occur, the neck of the womb opens, the baby is delivered, but it will normally be born alive. But clearly that's not the aim of an abortion procedure. The aim of that is to have a dead baby. So this poses the abortionist with a problem. So you have to kill the baby before it's born because you don't want to be accused of infanticide after it's born and then kill it. So partial birth abortion is the procedure whereby you kill the baby during the process of delivery of the baby. Very gruesome. It is fair to say that late term abortions in New Zealand are not common relative to the total number of abortions done in New Zealand. And the concern with the new law is that that number will increase. There is no question in my mind that the numbers of late-term abortions will increase. Unborn babies unquestionably feel pain after 20 weeks of gestation. It is probable that they feel pain before that. Their brains are working, they react against needle uh, injection uh, before that. So this is an important and serious matter, the feeling of pain. If you put a needle into the womb of a mother 
at 20 weeks or beyond or less, the baby will react and draw away. It undoubtedly feels pain. The heartbeat of an unborn child begins very early in its life. The heartbeat of the baby can be recorded from five weeks of gestation. That means five weeks after the mother misses her period. It means three weeks after fertilization, when the baby is less than one centimeter in length. This can be seen every day on ultrasound scans. Very early, the baby's heart is beating. And from that day on, until the death of the human being, that heart will continue beating. There is no question about this. There is no dispute about this. It can be seen by anyone and everyone. As a young doctor, one of the things that made me anxious was having to declare that someone was dead. This applied particularly following motor accidents. And death, we defined in practical terms as a doctor, as no movement, no breathing, no pulse, no heartbeat, an absent heartbeat. So death is defined in practical terms, there's no heartbeat. There is no question that in each and every termination of pregnancy, at whatever stage of pregnancy, or whichever method is used, hormones, pills, or operative, the baby stops its heartbeat and therefore dies. And because this procedure was performed with deliberation, the baby was killed. The age of viability has been progressively reducing over the years. When I began practice, it was unusual for a baby under 32 weeks gestation to survive if it was born prematurely. But now, babies down to certainly 24 weeks have a better than 50% chance of survival with modern care. Modern neonatal care has dramatically improved the survival rates of premature babies or small or early babies. So we're down to between 22 and 24 weeks gestation. There have been a number of operative procedures performed on the unborn child during pregnancy. Uh, some of these are done in the second or third trimester. Procedures carried out in order to improve the survival for the baby. And maybe I could add that Sir William Lyley, one of New Zealand's greatest scientists and doctors, was the first man in the world to perform treatment of a baby before it was born, independent of its mother. This was intrauterine exchange transfusion. One of the great highlights of New Zealand scientific advance carried out at National Women's. While I was working there as a registrar, patients were coming from all over the world to receive this dramatic treatment where he was saving the lives of many babies by treating them inside the womb well before they were born. In other words, he was treating them as independent patients, independent of their mother. Sir William Lyley was the father of so-called fetology, where they recognized the baby as an independent patient, independent of its mother from the point of view of treatment. Wonderful. As a society and as a medical profession, we encourage mothers to care for their unborn child. And most mothers who have a wanted child do that. So they're encouraged to not drink alcohol or certainly reduce very much. They're encouraged not to smoke because that increases the rate of prematurity and so on. They're encouraged to take folic acid to reduce the risk of a spinal tube defect. So it is completely ironic that we would be promoting more liberal abortion, which of course not only harms the baby, it destroys the baby, it kills the baby. That is the reality of the abortion procedure.
And that needs to be understood by the patient. Not only that, but the procedure carries complications. And some of them are very serious. And I have seen them. I saw three hysterectomies while I was in Dundee during my year. Three hysterectomies done as a consequence of complications of the D&C procedures that we were carrying out. We tore the cervix, there was massive bleeding, couldn't be stopped, the patient required a hysterectomy. She therefore never had children ever again. I saw patients with pelvic abscesses. I've seen patients with ruptured uteruses. There are serious immediate complications of the surgery. There are longer term physical complications such as an increased rate of premature delivery, an increased rate of miscarriage. There are emotional and mental complications which are serious. Guilt, depression, even an increased rate of suicide in mothers who have undergone termination of pregnancy in some studies. And then there are the spiritual dimension, which is another important aspect of the complications. It has to be understood that in each and every abortion, a baby dies and is killed. That is why the Royal Commission was so wise in stating there are competing rights between the mother who is living and the unborn child who is also living. And that has to be weighed up, those competing rights. But with the proposed new law, it would seem that the mother has all the rights and no recognition of the existence of the baby, the life of the baby, the value of the baby is considered. It's shocking beyond belief.